Hi, this is Brandon at the Tech Connect department at the New York Public Library. Today I'm going to show you how to use formulas and functions in Microsoft Excel. Let's get started. So every formula is going to begin with an equal sign. And after that equal sign, you're going to put any sort of mathematical expression. For example, 4 plus 4. When I press enter, it will then show me the result 8. You can use any sort of math operator to perform these calculations. And there's also more operators in addition to these to handle other types of information, such as words or strings or Boolean values. In addition to handling typed out numbers, a formula can also involve cell references. For example, if I type in equals a1, it will give me 8 because that's the value inside of A1. And I can also use cell references together with my arithmetic operators. For example, A1 plus A3. And this gives me 16. These types of formulas are helpful because if our cell values change, our formula will be updated accordingly. Now within the world of formulas, we have a special type of formula called a function. Functions perform more specialized, predefined calculations for us. For example, if I want to add all of these numbers together, I can use a function called sum. This is what it looks like. We type in equals sum, and then inside of a group of parentheses, we will list the range of cells that we want to include. That would be B1 all the way to G1. Notice that I'm not typing every single cell, B1, C1, D1, but rather I type the first and the last cell reference separated by a colon. Let me break down exactly how these functions are structured. So every function, like every formula, begins with an equal sign. After the equal sign, you will have a function name. The name of this function is sum, but I could perhaps call another function. For example, I could calculate the average using the average function. After the function name, a group of parentheses will contain arguments. Arguments are all the information that you need to provide to a function in order for it to complete its job. For example, we can see down in this pop-up below us that the average function needs numbers in order to do its job. Every function will have a different type of requirement for what its arguments are. For example, the function rand has no arguments involved because it simply provides a random number. There are thousands of functions in Excel. In addition to sum, here are a few other basic functions to get you started. The average function, as I mentioned before, will calculate the average of a list of numbers. The min and max functions will calculate the minimum value and the maximum value of a group of numbers. The count and the count a functions will count how many cells are in your list. Count tells you how many cells have numbers in them, and count a will tell you how many cells have information in them, or how many cells are not blank. For example, if I change the contents of this G cell to a word, it will not change our count A value, but it does change our count value. That's all you need to know to get started with formulas and functions. And if you want more practice, you can join us for a free online or in-person class at the New York Public Library. See the description to find a link to find the class that's right for you. Thanks for watching.